Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create asymmetrical objects inside of Illustrator with a couple of handy techniques. So to help us with this technique of mirroring, we need to have Smart Guides turned on, because ultimately when we start drawing this shape with the pen tool, we want to get a very sort of loose interpretation of this to start off with, but it's this point here, where this next anchor point here, the Smart Guide will snap in place so we get a nice clean left edge to mirror along. Um, obviously the pen tool wants to carry on drawing tool, I hit the escape key on the keyboard. And then you must switch to the selection tool, the top of the tools panel, by tapping the V key. Because you don't want to have any anchor points in here selected, just the whole path. And then from here, go up to Effect, down to Distort and Transform, and choose Transform. And so from in here then, what I will do is I will turn on for one copy, because we want to create the other half, so we need an additional version of this artwork, and then we need to mirror. So it'll be one of reflect X or reflect Y. So the X axis is left to right and the Y axis is up and down. So in our case, we want to reflect left to right. The only downside is that this will by default mirror to the middle of the original object. We don't want that. So we need to change the reference point from its center down here to the left edge. There we go. We now have a mirrored version on the left hand side. This is a virtual version. So if I click OK, and if I go to view and then if I choose outline, you'll see the original object is there. The copy that's mirrored is a virtual version with an effect. So back to view, turn on preview. And from here, I can tap the A key, click on my anchor points, and I can modify this and get it looking a little bit closer to the original. Switch to the anchor point tool with a shift and C, drag those into place. You'll notice that any edits that I make to the original updates the virtual version in there. Now, if I just pick up my zoom tool and zoom into the top up here, a couple of things to know. I'm going to switch to my anchor point tool. I'm just going to pull down and just curve that in there like so. You'll also notice that sometimes when you're dealing with a stroke on an object with no fill, you might get a little gap in here. Again, that can be resolved just by selecting the object. And then if you've got the appearance panel open, you'll find that the transform is shown in there. And if you left click on it, it'll take you back to the same settings. Make sure preview's turned on, then go to your move options and we want to move it left or right, obviously horizontal, swipe across that. Negative values for the horizontal will move it to the left hand side, but a positive value will move it to the right hand side where we need it. And just one pixel in this case. With that done, click OK and then zoom out. That works fairly well. Obviously I can click on my fill appearance and I can add fill colours in here. Or of course I could apply a gradient inside of there. The only downside is that that gradient is mirrored because the objects are mirrored. So if I apply, say, a radial gradient as well, you'll notice that that is mirrored on both sides. So as good as this technique is to mirror and create a virtual version, there are occasions where you may well have to just convert both of those sides into a physical object to get total control over it. So I'll remove the fill from this so we can see the shape a bit easier and then I'll remove the transform that's applied to it by dragging it and dropping it down onto the delete button. So I'm just left with my original. What you can then do is go to edit, choose copy, edit, and then choose paste in place. And I can then go to the properties panel and I can flip that copy horizontally to create that mirrored version. So that's a physical version. Hover my cursor over the shape, click and drag, and then you want to try and get them as close together as you can. And when they are, you'll get that. So you're looking for a purple cross that reads intersect in the middle. That's when you've got them in just the right place. Let go of the mouse, select them both, and then you can go to object, path, and choose join. That will essentially weld the two physical halves of the path that are identical to one another, and it now becomes one complete object. Allowing me to go back to the swatches panel and apply things like uh, patterns and gradients and they'll behave in ways which you would expect them to. So there you go folks, that's how you can create asymmetrical objects inside of Illustrator. Thanks for watching, if you've liked the video and found it useful, please give it a thumbs up, you can always subscribe, click on the bell to get notifications when we post a new video on the channel, and until next time, farewell.